first before we start for the centrifugal uh, clutch we want to discuss what is the requirement of the centrifugal clutch why centrifugal clutch is required uh, because we have studied uh, friction plate clutch then we have gone for a cone plate clutch uh, what is the requirement of the cone plate cone plate clutch the requirement of the cone, of the cone plate clutch is to get a wedge action we know now my third uh, thing we that we are going to discuss is cone clutch now why cone cl uh, sorry uh, so centrifugal clutch now why centrifugal clutch is required every clutch has got its requirement in its own perspective now we want to go and discuss uh, what is the requirement of a centrifugal clutch and where it is specially used then we should be discussing with the principles then the mathematical formulation and then we should be solving the problem in another video okay let's start of a centrifugal of a centrifugal clutch Now, if you see that, what is the requirement of a centrifugal clutch? Why centrifugal clutch is required? First of all, you see, whenever it is required to engage the load after the driving member has attained a particular speed, a centrifugal clutch is used. That means, uh, first, the first thing is that it does not, uh, when the requirement of engagement uh, of the driving member uh, with the driven member is required when the driving member has attained a particular speed then only the driven member is required to attach if that is the criteria then we should go for a centrifugal clutch see the centrifugal clutch permits the drive motor or the driven unit or in to engage or engage to start warm up and accelerate to the operating speed please underline the word operating speed without load so the clutch on its jury on its on its uh, on its uh, convenience on its uh, it permits the driving unit it could be a motor or an engine to start up warm up and then to accelerate to the operating speed okay without load that means when the driven member is not attached to the driving member he basically the three things it is required uh, by the centrifugal clutch to perform that is it it is allow the time delay sufficient time delay so that to gain a momentum to gain a momentum of the driving unit to get the momentum of the driving unit before taking up the load before taking up the load means before taking up before taking the driven unit so it allows the prime mover which can which could be a motor or an engine to gain the momentum then it allows it then it allows the driven unit or the load to get in connect to get in connect with it now what are where are it is uses it is used basically in heavy mobile equipment as crane as cranes in cement mills and ball mills also it is used in two wheelers like mopeds or large army vehicles with the working principle of the uh, centrifugal clutch now uh, a, a centrifugal clutch as the name suggests that it works on the principle of centrifugal force now we could see that it consists of a spider it consists of a spider see there is a spider is there it consists of a spider which is mounted on the input shaft this spider is mounted on the input shaft first the spider is mounted on the input shaft the spider is mounted on the input shaft so first the spider is mounted on the input shaft now second what uh, uh, <coughs> a sliding and which is provided with four equally spaced radial glides this is a radial glide four equally spaced radial glides are there four equally spaced radial guides are there four equally spaced radial guides this is one radial glide there should be four radial glides i have shown only a portion of it so four radial glides are there a sliding shoe is retained in each guide a sliding shoe a sliding shoe a sliding shoe 
is provided on each radial glide. A sliding shoe is provided on each radial glide. The outer surface of the sliding shoe is provided with a lining of friction material. So the outer surface of the sliding shoe is provided with a lining of friction material. Is provided with a lining of friction material. The and the complete assembly of spiders and sorry the outer surface of the sliding shoe with the lining of the friction material. The complete assembly spider shoe and spring is enclosed in a <coughs> coaxial drum which is mounted on the output shaft now all this is mounted on an assembly uh, is mounted on an assembly of coaxial drum coaxial drum now all these portions that is spider mounted on the input shaft four radial guides then one sliding shoe par on each radial guides and the friction material all these four uh, assemblies all these four uh, portions or these four uh, parts are mounted in a coaxial assembly uh, on oh, sorry on a coaxial drum the, and which is connected with the output shaft which is connected with the output shaft or the driving shaft or the driven shaft sorry or the driven shaft so basically what happens basically what happens this is the input shaft if you if you see the figure this is the in, if you see the figure this is the input shaft <coughs> over here connected the spiders are there and on the spiders there are radial guides there are four four radial guides are provided four radial guides are provided on the radial guides lies the uh, shoe riding the lies the radial shoe this is the radial shoe and on, and over the radial shoe lies the friction lining friction lining now all this lies on a coaxial drum this is a coaxial drum all this lies on a coaxial drum so this coaxial drum uh, is connected with the output shaft or the driving shaft okay now this is the principle of the this is the, this is the this actually the morphology of the coaxial <coughs> of the centrifugal clutch now how does it works how does it works if you concentrate over here as the speed of the input shaft increases that is that is the value of the omega increases the centrifugal force increases now as the centrifugal force increases more and more what happened the <coughs> the radial the uh, actually um, on the sliding on the on the radial glide the sliding shoes are there and the sliding shoes are connected uh, are held in that position uh, by the help of the spring now when the centrifugal force increases more and more what happened the sliding shoe overcomes the force of the friction overcomes the sorry overcomes the force of the spring and moves outwards overcomes the force of the spring and moves outward due to more centrifugal force and comes in contact with the <coughs> and sorry and pushes and pushes this friction lining against the rotating and pushes the friction lining and pushes the friction lining on the drum and attend what uh, the delay is attend so first it uh, the input shaft require uh, the speed of the input shaft increases now then it, it, it starts up when it starts up there is no load on the input shaft so it is freely to move it is freely to attain accelerate and it freely and, and, and attain a unit and it and is optimum rpm on that rpm the centrifugal force is very high so that it pushes against the friction it pushes against the uh, 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 against the stiffness of this friction and causes the friction lining and causes to come in contact with the uh, with the drum and the power is transmitted so that the delay the delay which is required which is the main essential part of the centrifugal uh, centrifugal clutch that it that it only requires to transmit force when uh, uh, to when the uh, when the uh, driven member has acquired an optimum speed so at the start the driven member is not given that speed at the start. Of the, so what happens slowly as it achieves the optimum RPM, uh, it achieves that speed and then only with the help of this output drum, with the help of this drum, the power is transmitted. So this is the main consideration or the, or the main requirement of the centrifugal clutch. Now what happens? Now you, uh, what happens? <coughs> you could adjust the, you could adjust the optimum speed on the basis of the stiffness of the spring. So if you can, you can, if you can that there is a relation between the stiffness of the spring and the uh, and the omega n so if you could uh, if you or the n of the rpm so if you if you require to engage the clutch after a certain value of n so you could 
change the value of the stiffness of the spring depending on the value of n so that is totally in your control that if we change the value of the n suppose we require a very small value of n suppose we require uh, this amount of m uh, this uh, very small value of n so uh, should increase uh, should be should be more so that it 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 is more than the stiffness of the spring the spring stiffness then it can comes in contact so what value of n is required to uh, to cross the stiffness uh, of the spring is totally your control of the designer control that can be controlled now basically what happens when the speed decreases on the input shaft uh, the centrifugal force decreases and as coefficient of friction and as total power is transmitted due to coefficient of friction and coefficient of friction uh, sorry uh, power is transmitted due to frictional force now as frictional force depend on the normal reaction the normal reaction decreases so what happens the friction lining is no more in contact with the radial glide uh, so no more in contact sorry very sorry no more no more in contact with the drum and the drum is then the drum slips and the and there is no torque transmission so that is the basic principle of how uh, a re, uh, how a centrifugal clutch operates now we should go for the mathematical deduction part now the last part we should go for the force analysis of the centrifugal clutch or uh, basically the mathematical formulation of the centrifugal clutch and now first we, before that we should see that uh, this is uh, this is the uh, actually the block diagram this is the outer drum I have shown and this is the spring and this is the shoe uh, and so as the then and, and both are coaxial with the input shaft both are coaxial with the input shaft this is the input shaft basically this is the input shaft this is the input shaft input shaft basically the input shaft now uh, before the doing the force analysis first we have to uh, know some parameters suppose rd rd the radius of the drum rd the radius of the drum rd is the radius of the drum which is in millimeter now rg rg is equals to rg is basically the radius of the center of gravity of the shoe this is a cg this is a g and 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 from center to r uh, from center to the g is called the rg which is called the center uh, which is the radius of the cg of the shoe and m is the mass of the shoe m is the mass of the shoe m is the mass of the shoe and pc is the centrifugal force pc is the centrifugal force which is acting on the shoe which is acting on the shoe so this is the pc the centrifugal force which is acting on the shoe and uh, and if you see that and uh, ps is the frictional force ps is a frictional force ps is a frictional force which is acting in the downward direction and pc and pc2 is a centrifugal force which is acting in the pcf is a centrifugal force which is acting in the upward direction basically what happens when pcf when the frictional force minus this ps the spring force uh, when you multiply with this mu we will get the frictional force which is transmitted I'm coming to it slowly and Z is the number of shoes and Z is the number of shoes we get Z is the number of shoes and Omega 1 Omega 1 Omega 1 is the uh, running speed in rad per second and Omega 2 uh, is the speed at which engagement uh, engagement of the shoe with the uh, or with the, uh, the friction lining with the uh, uh, friction lining with the drum starts so Omega well, omega 1 is the speed at which engagement starts and z is the number of shoes and z is the number of shoes so now we should go for the mathematical calculation for first first we see that pcf we see that when we have to calculate the centrifugal force at the beginning so at beginning omega 1 is the running speed omega 1 is the running speed so at omega 1 the running speed what is the centrifugal force that is when the actually basically when the input shaft just starts motion so then the centrifugal force is calculated m omega 1 m, m omega 1 square rg by 1000 we know m m omega 1 square rg into 1000 the centrifugal force and this uh, this uh, pcf1 must be equal to the spring force which is acting in the downward direction which is acting in the downward direction i have shown which is acting in the direction this so as because it is acting in the downward direction and is equal to the spring force no motion will take place so ps is equals to pcf is equals to m omega 1 square rg by 1000 as because no motion is taken taking place so it can be assumed that the spring force is equals the spring force has the value of this one m omega 1 square into rg by 1000 now as the speed of the input shaft increases and it ch changes from omega 1 to omega 2 what happens then the 
shoe radially moves outward then the shoes radially move outward overcoming the frictional forces so as when slightly it overcomes the frictional forces uh, the then the shoe uh, then then the frictional lining comes in contact with the output drum and motion is started and the motion is started uh, given to the output shaft and the motion takes place so this value this value of PCF is just greater than PS. So what is the running in running condition? What is the net value? So if we could buy minus PCF or two minus PCF one. So PCF one is as, we are, as because no motion is there. We have assumed that PCF one is equals to this the value of uh, uh, sorry uh, PCF one is uh, assumed the value of the frictional force PS uh, not the frictional force sorry spring force spring force PCF one is assumed as the value of the spring force m1 m omega one square r zero so when the contact is there that means the uh, the centrifugal force is just able to overcome the centrifugal force is just able to overcome the the centrifugal force is just able to overcome the uh, spring force and motion takes place. So it is written like this PCF2 minus PCF1 is given in by MRG omega to square minus omega to square by 1000. Now when we come to frictional force when you come to do that when as as the drum connects as the drum is connected uh, with the as as a so sorry friction lining is connected with the drum. So uh, basically what happens uh, so basically what happens uh, the uh, the portion the motion starts so frictional force so as because the frictional lining comes in contact with the drum so what happens frictional force mu is incorporated in this equation mu mg because f is equals to mu into r this is the normal reaction this can be considered as a normal reaction this can be uh, this can be considered as a normal reaction i'm showing it just uh, adjusting the this can be considered as a normal reaction this can be considered as a normal reaction. So it is taken as mu mg into r, the mu was normal reaction. Now frictional torque mt. Now frictional torque mt becomes mu is equals to mrz rg into rd. Why rd? Because now when you multiply force with the radius, you get the value of the torque. If you multiply it to, if you multiply, if you want to get the value of torque, what happened? You have to multiply force with the radius. Now this radius is what? This radius is Rd or the radius of the drum. So basically when when we multiply this uh, Mt that is mu Mg Rd, we will get the frictional torque which is normally taken as Mt and Z, a new parameter has come where Z, Z because we have shown this for our one shoe there are, and Z indicates they are the number of shoes where Z is the number of shoes. So if there are four shoes you have to multiply with four and we ultimately get this value of the frictional torque mt is equals to mu m R, rg into rd into z into omega 2 minus omega 1 by 1000. So this is all about uh, the centrifugal uh, clutch. So first basically what we have done for centrifugal clutch. So basically what we have done for centrifugal clutch. We basically find out uh, uh, the description of the centrifugal clutch. Then we uh, analyze the first we have done the uh, description of the centrifugal clutch. Then we moved for the uh, how centrifugal how the working principle how the centrifugal clutch works and then we go uh, for the uh, <coughs> then we go for the mathematical portion or the four senses of, of the centrifugal clutch so that is all about our the centrifugal clutch i hope you understand if any problems you can contact with me uh, and by clicking the like uh, like button or subscribe to my channel thank you have a good day